Well, I'm going to start the new year off with a viewer request video. A while back I made this drill adapter, drill fixture, whatever you want to call it, for the Rockford lathe so I can drill on the center line and also use my lathe as a rotary table since I don't have a mill. I made just kind of a quick highlight reel about it. It's a nine minute video, I think, a little over. I'll put the link right here so you can just click on that if you only want to watch the nine minute video of how I did it. Um, I say that because this video, I am really going to get into detail on it. It's going to be a very long video. But I had a viewer asking questions about this and I made a huge mistake with this fixture. I put the drill in the center. And that doesn't work when you're up against the chuck. Especially if you have a jaw sticking out right there. By the time you get to the center of your drill bit, you're a long ways out from the chuck. And on a small part, that just doesn't work. So, we're going to make this new one here with two holes in it. They're very close to the edge. And like I said, this video is going to be very detailed. So if you don't want to watch this long one, you can go watch my highlight reel. But like I said, I had a viewer asking some questions about it and wanted to know more details about it. And since I made the mistake, I needed to redo it. So I thought I'd bring you along and really explain everything. Hopefully I explain everything you need to know about how to make in this and the ideas behind it. Um, it's a very, very useful tool. And before I get too far <clears throat> into this, I want to talk a little bit about the drill I use with this. Um, I use this cheapo Grizzly drill. It's an air drill. I bought it with the intent to keep it on my welding truck for when I'm going on site. That way I could just unspool the air hose real quick, drill a little hole, you know, undo a few screws, maybe even a small bolts, just whatever. Just basically replace my cordless drill that every time I went to use, the battery was dead. And the nice thing about using the air compressor is it wouldn't always have to be running either. Uh, tank's full, you can run it for a few minutes. Not very long though, but it takes a lot of air. But that was the intent. And I bought this little Grizzly drill for 25 bucks just because I thought, well, I'll see if I even like the idea. And I have to say, I am completely impressed with this cheapo drill. Um, yeah, $25. It's all metal. I even uh, took apart the planetary gearbox. It's all metal in there. This thing is actually a workhorse. I have drilled a hole through half inch plate with a three quarter inch bit in this thing. Um, a little difficult to hang on to, but it did it. it. Takes a lot of air. I just, I'm really been just blown away by it. The only thing um, that I had problems with is when I first got it, um, this housing right here was not on tight to the drill, and the thing would slip. Um, I originally just thought it was a clutch in there and it was built that way so you wouldn't overload it and then one day it wouldn't work at all and this black housing well it used to be black still some black left <laughs> um, but this black housing had rotated it's threaded on here and it wasn't uh, keeping the planetary gears in place so they were slipping in there um, so yeah I tightened that up and it's been great I do recommend if you do get this drill to take off this housing and make sure all those gears are greased in there. It'll probably uh, extend the life of your tool a lot because the grease in mine was just kind of smeared on the side. It wasn't necessarily around all the gears. And if that housing hadn't come loose, I would have never taken that apart, inspected it, and seen that. But yeah, so like I said, I am thoroughly impressed with this drill. I just blown away. It's the half inch chuck model out of Grizzly. Uh, last time I checked is $25 so you can't beat that. And like I said I've had it for two years and I abuse the crap out of this thing and it is still going strong. <sighs> so anyway on to the video. I talked about that a lot longer than I thought I would. The basic parts to this thing is a large T-nut that I built you'll have to figure out how to fit it to um, your compound. 
I really doubt that everybody out there has a 19 something Rockford lathe that's almost 100 years old. Which by the way, I absolutely love this lathe. So I made this T-nut with two threaded holes in it. It slides into the compound and it's just slightly below the height of the compound. It's just seriously like maybe five thousandths um, less. And then this adapter or fixture or whatever you want to call it sits on there with two bolts that keep it in place. And then the drill goes in here and this bolt gets tightened up. And I don't tighten that very tight, just enough that it keeps the drill from turning. Just a slight tug on the wrench. But I'll give you the dimensions of this and talk a little bit about it just real quickly. Obviously you're gonna have to alter it. My T-nut is about five and a quarter. Looks like I'm just shy of that. I cut my plate that's gonna go here at uh, five and a half. Uh, maybe I should use the tape measure on that so you can see it a little bit better. We'll just start all over. The bottom plate that sits on the compound is uh, five and a half by five by three quarter. So hopefully you guys can see all that. And that's for this lathe, but that gives you an idea of kind of where I'm starting at. And I guess I can leave that set up there. And then the plate that the drill goes through is five and three quarter um, by three and it's one inch thick. The one inch thick you're pretty much going to have to use just so you have enough to steady the drill or or you could uh, even make it with two plates like a plate up here and then a plate back here on this. Whatever. Um, and this is a little bit wider than the bottom plate so I can weld right here underneath this edge have a little bit of lip and weld there and I'll hide those welds. So anyway, that's the overall dimensions. Yeah, let's uh, get that in there and start knocking this mill scale off. Now since uh, I'm gonna spin this in the chuck instead of use the fly cutter, I'm gonna put a center line on there. Kinda go from corner to corner and make an X here. Doesn't have to be perfect. I got some oil on my slide rule. That way I kind of know where center is. With that X on there, you can see the lines. Uh, I just kind of eyeballed it to the dead center. It's close, I'm sure it's off a little bit. Hit the wrong lever. So used to my Atlas lathe, been using it a lot lately. And I hit the carry speed and set cross slide. Darn it, forgot to check that too.
Well, we're off to a good start on this project, aren't we? Oh. Got a gorgeous finish, though. My, that feels good. Well, let me think a bit on how to correct that. Sometimes the obvious stuff is just too obvious. Um, since I can't clear my cutter all the way out to the end on these jaws, which I thought when I set it up I, it would, um, I'm gonna run the lathe in reverse and we'll go the other direction. And might I add, <clears throat> um, make sure you got enough travel going across that way when you run your lathe in reverse. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do there to catch it. If I move the carriage back and then run that forward, I'll have enough to get there. There we go. That ah, gets me past a little more just to make sure because I got the travel. So, there, okay. Now I gotta come back into it and blend and try again. This is gonna be fun. Oh, it's gonna be close. That ah, is gonna be very close. Well, that one's way off. Am I missing something here? some reason that jaw hits those jaws are different I never knew that that jaw hits and all the other jaws like that one actually has a lot of clearance Huh. Things you learn that you never pay attention to in the past. <sighs> That's actually a really nice finish. Very happy with that. I really took my time when grinding that bit. It paid off. It's interesting though to look at it through the camera. It, every time I do that it just amazes me. Like sitting here I can kind of see like a dark ring right there and then looking through the camera I'm like it's obvious you know but here with the naked eye it just looks like a shiny piece of metal and you feel it and it I mean it's so smooth. Just Time and time again, it always amazes me how much the camera picks up on that stuff. So now we'll take this piece out, flip it over, and machine that side.
One side of this is definitely a lot higher than the other side of that. Man. Looks like I take another pass. It was skimming the rust off though. I can see where it hit a lot of that. I can like right through here, about two fingers wide, about the only place I can't see machine marks. I'm not sure what the camera picks up. But looking behind the metal, it looks like it's sitting here right. I don't see daylight behind any one of the jaws. So that piece of metal is just off that much. That's a really good finish too. I like that a lot. Okay, um, now we'll pull that out of there and we'll do the same thing to the other piece of strap iron or flat bar, whatever you want to call it. We'll face off this piece of metal now. This is the one by three. And I had to stick a piece of metal in here and there as spacers so the jaws wouldn't bottom out. Um, and I forgot to say earlier, the reason I'm using this notch instead of the outside notch on the jaws is if I use the outside notch, the jaws will hit each other. So that's why I brought them in one. Even on the other plate, they would still hit. Another wonderful finish. So pleased with that. Um, and it went really quick too. <laughs> Actually, going from three quarters of an inch thick metal to one inch thic metal allowed me to clear the jaws easy and it worked beautiful like it's supposed to. All right, now I'm not going to flip this one over and machine the other side because. We'll machine the other side of that one once we get it part of the assembly on here. That way we know that it's square up and down when we do that. Um, so let's see, what's next? I got the base plate all done. Well, I don't have the base plate all done. Ah, we gotta go and fly cut the edges. So I'll have to put the fly cutter in here now, and then we'll do these edges. So that means I gotta flip my jaws over. I have the fly cutter stuck in the chuck. Um, the one by three plate is machine side down on a very clean compound. The T nut stuck in here. So I set it on there. Just a one inch uh, spacer. This is a goof up from another project. But it's actually the same material as that stuff. So I'll set that on there, um, and I will just use my angle plate that I built across there. This thing is actually machined on two sides, nice and square. So I'll set it on there, we'll put in a couple longer bolts and bolt it down, and then we'll use the fly cutter and cut off this thing. The nice thing about using this angle plate uh, when doing the fly cutting is it makes a great shield. That's kind of a big reason I use it. Other than it's already got the holes the correct distance for my T-nut down here. Got the piece clamped down. 
Um, I'm at two on the indicator. At this end of the piece of metal, going across, it drops down to zero out here in the middle. And then when we get back to the other end out here, it comes back up to two. Well, there's one and a half. Um, since it's just a mill scale finish, that's close enough for me. Okay, touching there. So we'll come in just a few thousands. I don't really have any uh, indicator or anything set up to figure out how far in I'm going. I'm just going until it cleans up. So we'll move it just a little bit and that feels pretty good. Okay, clears there. And we'll start her up, run it nice and slow. Well, that ain't very slow. Decent finish. It was squeaking, so it leads me to think my fly cutter should have been sharpened before I did this. Honestly, I didn't even look at it. That's bad of me. Oh, jeepers. Somebody put them on there. It wasn't me. And turn that around. All right. And then we're going to indicate it again. 73 and right there it's still 73 so this end tapers off a little bit so that is it we are <clears throat> on.